a high budget, original, sci-fi movie in 2023. This doesn't really sound right, does it? And yet we actually got it. In 2023 it feels like every big budget blockbuster movie has to be part of some well known or at least recognizable franchise and have a huge commercial appeal as well. From Fast and Furious to the MCU movies. The only exception is Christopher Nolan whose name alone is the best advertisement. However, even in 2023 we got an original sci-fi movie with an 80 million dollars budget. The creator was created by Gareth Edwards who previously directed Godzilla and Rogue One. His debut as a director was a low budget monstrous movie which I've never seen before but the premise sounds interesting enough and for half a million budget it does look decent. First thing I want to discuss is the movie structure. The movie consists of four main chapters. The creator, the child, the friend and the mother. I like when films are structured this way because it makes the movie feel more like a book or rather like a play. Almost all books consist of chapters and parts, just like plays consist of acts or scenes. This is a very small detail of course, but it just shows that this movie does have a creative vision. The vast majority of modern blockbusters are crafted using the same formula to the point when they feel like they weren't even written by actual human writers but by some advanced or rather not very advanced artificial intelligence. The latest MCU and DCU movies bar Guardians of the Galaxy just feel genuine. The creator at least feels like an actual person came up with an idea for this story. Speaking of AI, this movie is about how the American government nuked Los Angeles and blamed AI for that. After the explosion, the US government and Western allies banned the AI. The movie implies that West practically committed a genocide against the artificial intelligence. The US also declared war on AI and even built a huge space base called Nomad that can fastly travel around the globe and launch multiple missiles. The place where AI and humans live in peace as opposed to the West is called New Asia. Here I have questions to the movie, to its world building to be more precise. What exactly is New Asia? Is that a country? If so, why doesn't this country have any military? Americans constantly attack and bomb civilians who try to fight back. Shouldn't the military respond? Where is the new Asian government? Shouldn't they try to have some sort of conversation with the US government and pursue the US to stop attacking them? Where is the United Nations? Why can't the US army do anything on a foreign soil without any reprimanding? I understand that the West is against AI, but the US Army kills a lot of civilians too, despite claiming they only have war against machines. There should be a lot of evidence of war crimes, which the UN must condemn. If New Asia is a country, how was it formed? And why? The movie shows us that New Asia consists of Southeast Asia, parts of China including Tibet, and surprisingly, Japan too. First, what happened to China? How could China lose such huge parts of its territory? Second, why Japan joined New Asia when Japan is one of the closest allies of the United States? In a realistic scenario, Japan would have certainly allied with the USA. Not to mention that the Philippines and Vietnam are also US allies. But to be fair, the movie isn't trying to be some kind of realistic geopolitical drama. It's sci-fi after all. Movie mentions New Asia and the West. But what about other parts of the world? Latin America, Africa, Middle East, Russia? For this question I might have an answer. Maybe only the West and Asia are technologically advanced to have AI robots. Other parts of the world are too impoverished and underdeveloped. In the case of the Middle East and Russia, in the future humanity could have switched to renewable energy from oil and natural gas, leaving both the Middle East and Russia without a lot of revenue and with imploding economies. But to be fair, the movie tries to portray a very simplistic conflict scenario. There is the West and there is Asia. New Asia is used as some kind of metaphor for all non-white regions of the world ever invaded by Western countries. More specifically, this war against AI is an allusion to two American wars. Vietnam War, which is obvious even the setting is almost the same, Southeast Asia. 
and Iraq war, when the US government used false evidence that Saddam Hussein possessed weapons of mass destruction as a justification to invade the country. Just like in the creator, the US government wants to eradicate AI because AI allegedly nuked Los Angeles, when it was actually a human mistake and AI didn't intend to harm anyone. In New Asia, AI and humans live pretty peacefully together. The creator is inspired by a lot of stories. First, of course, Akira. Blade Runner seems to inspire the setting. James Cameron's Avatar, a story about a man who comes as a colonizer, but ends up fighting against colonizers on the side of the indigenous people. A lot of Vietnam War stories. Nomad seems to be inspired by the Death Star from the Star Wars universe. A lot of scenes in this movie are visually reminiscent of Rogue One, the movie Edwards directed before the creator. There are many questions not only to world building, the world building issues I can excuse. No one said this story takes place exactly on our earth, but there are also questions to the plot. The main character Joshua seems to be wanted across New Asia for kidnapping a child. His face is everywhere. He is a black man in Southeast Asia. It would have been really hard for him to get lost in the crowd. There aren't many black people in Southeast Asia, especially not black people with a child. He is just too conspicuous. But only one person recognizes Joshua as a wanted person. No mat looks visually good, but it seems to travel too fast. It also seems to change altitude all the time, instead of staying at the higher layers of atmosphere. Why didn't AI attempt to strike Nomad before? They could have created some sort of powerful weapon that could strike the Nomad. Maybe not destroy it completely, but at least damage it. Maybe the new Asian government, if there is a government, feared that this would escalate the conflict and the US will declare war on New Asia. Because officially the US is at war with only AI, even though the US army has no problems with brutalizing civilians, even children. Also, the name New Asia sounds weird, because New Asia itself is just a small portion of Asia. Most of China and the Korean Peninsula aren't part of it, but that's just nitpicking from my side. The movie's budget is around 80 million dollars, and it looks great. Many scenes were shot on locations with natural lightning. I really can't complain about the visual sight. As I already mentioned, the whole aesthetic is a mix of Blade Runner and Rock One with Vietnam War movies. The sound design is also good. A lot of blockbuster films these days fail due to inflated budgets. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny had a 300 million budget and was practically doomed not to be successful. The creator had the potential to be really good. Probably the movie should have been longer and R rated. I think the studio could afford an R-rated movie since the budget isn't really high. Apparently there are a lot of scenes that were cut from the theatrical release. It might be the case when the director's cut is much better than the theatrical version. Like James Cameron's The Abyss which I watched recently. So many great scenes were cut and the entire subplot was practically eradicated. The script is the movie's biggest weakness. But I still enjoy the movie and I am still glad it's an original sci-fi that exists. We definitely do need more of them these days.